I'm Kyle with Fundamentals of Finance, and today we're gonna have a showdown. It's the old versus the new. Last generation's investment guru versus this generation's investment guru. The Oracle of Omaha versus Queen Kathy. And this, of course, is Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway against Kathy Wood and the ARK Innovation ETF. Today, I'll compare the pros and cons of both investments, which in some ways are polar opposites and in other ways are surprisingly similar. I'll explain how investors should approach each of them differently, provide an outlook for each, and then of course, at the end, I'll declare a winner. In a way, this story reminds me of the old fable, the tortoise and the hare. If you aren't familiar, the hare, which we'd call a rabbit in the 21st century, challenges a much slower tortoise to a race. He starts out with a big lead, of course, but then he gets complacent and he's so confident he's gonna win, he takes a nap halfway through only to wake up to find out the tortoise has won the race. That's the origin of the phrase you probably heard, slow and steady wins the race. And it applies perfectly to Ark Innovation and Berkshire Hathaway. You can see from this chart that starting from the low point in 2020, the Ark Innovation ETF more than quadrupled in less than a year. But then investors got complacent that the fast growing, high octane companies it owned would always do better. And a year and a half later, with Ark down about 70% from its peak, its investors are finally waking up to realize that slow and steady Berkshire Hathaway is actually winning the race. So why have these two investments fared so differently? Well, it comes down to two basic things, the types of investments they own and the changing investment environment. Arc Innovation is packed full of fast growing, largely unprofitable companies that are mostly dependent on the same kinds of things to do well, AKA they're not very diversified and it's likely they'll all be doing really well or they'll all be doing really poorly at any given time. And we've seen both in the past couple years. When ARK's share price started rising dramatically in March 2020, it was because everything was going right for that kind of company. The work from home environment led to even faster growth in a lot of the digital businesses that ARK owned. Fed stimulus pushed down interest rates, which increased the valuations of these companies, and government stimulus checks put a lot of money in people's pockets when they didn't have much else to spend it on other than FOMO meme stocks they found on Wall Street bets. Berkshire Hathaway, on the other hand, owns a much more diversified portfolio of companies, so it's not likely to have the booms and busts that ARK will have. Hence a comparison to the tortoise. Its businesses are also much more mature and profitable and not growing nearly as quickly. Examples of companies Berkshire Hathaway owns include Geico, Duracell, Dairy Queen, and BNSF Railway. A lot of these businesses were hurt in the pandemic. Lots of Dairy Queens and Hellsberg Diamonds, which it also owns, are in malls but no one was going to malls. And the railroad companies didn't need to transport as much stuff because so much industry was shut down. But now we're in very different times. People can go outside again, so the unprecedented growth in ARK's work from home businesses has slowed. Higher interest rates also lower the valuations on these high growth businesses, reversing the trend from 2020. And now, heading into an economic slowdown and likely recession, companies with more cash on their balance sheets that are more profitable and might be more defensive in a downturn are the place to be and that's Berkshire Hathaway in a nutshell. Now, despite the obvious differences, there are also actually some similarities that would give me pause in investing in either of these. Mainly, this comes down to a considerable amount of key person risk. That refers to the risk that when a company or an investment is highly dependent on one person for its success, and that one person leaves for whatever reason, things can go downhill quickly. Kathy Wood is 66, and even though Warren Buffett is 91, I would say the risk is actually worse at ARC. Why? Because of who's behind her. She is the main portfolio manager on all of her company's ETFs. And there's essentially no one else at the firm with any real portfolio management experience. To be honest, Kathy Wood actually doesn't even have a very good track record herself. She was a portfolio manager with Alliance Bernstein from 2001 to 2013. And the funds she managed have all had either mediocre or bad results with ultra high volatility in her tenure. Her time with ARK has been unique in that she's made some massive bets in the perfect environment for them to pay off. I pretty much call this luck and I don't think it would be consistently repeated long term. But even if you disagree with me there, the people behind her do not inspire confidence and I wouldn't trust them with one Colombian peso of my money. That's about 1 50th of one cent by the way. Berkshire Hathaway also has significant key person risk with Warren Buffett. Obviously he's about 25 years older than Kathy Wood and he also has a significant role at the company three of them actually, he's already named Greg Abel as a successor CEO whenever he should retire. His second role as chairman of the board is expected to go to his son, Howard, and his third role as chief investment officer will probably go to one of his two top portfolio managers, Ted Combs or Ted Welshler. This is certainly a much better situation than one at ARC, 
But because so many people believe in Warren Buffett, who has basically earned double the stock market's return in his tenure, which is much longer than Kathy Woods, there's a risk that when his name goes, a lot of investors go as well. And stock prices move when people buy and sell them. To top it off, it's not just some of his many loyal retail investors that could sell, or their children as they inherit the stock and don't have that same level of loyalty to Buffett, but he himself owns 30% of the company. When he dies, he's going to give all those shares away to charities who are supposed to sell them over time and put the money toward good causes. So those shares will be sold too. And that's a lot of selling pressure that could lead to a challenging long-term backdrop for the stock, even if the new management proves to be high quality. As far as how to invest in these, I think they serve very different purposes in a portfolio. Berkshire Hathaway is like a diversified mutual fund of boring, safe, often value-oriented businesses, slow and steady. This is the kind of investment that should do well in the environment we're in now. And if inflation and rates stay high for longer than the market expects, which I think is a real possibility, it could further its lead over ARC. While not every environment is ideal for Berkshire Hathaway, it's highly unlikely it'll ever go down 75%. So it's more of the type of investment you can buy and hold for a long time without worrying too much about it. To contrast, because of the extreme volatility, I think ARK Innovation is the kind of position to keep small in your portfolio. If I were to buy it, I would want to do so when it's weak, like it is now, and be ready to add to it if it gets weaker. Then when things are going well, it will be smart not to get complacent like the hare or rabbit, Avoid the FOMO as it keeps going up and everyone is universally positive on it and sell while you're ahead. You're not gonna get the timing perfect. You're gonna kick yourself for a while as you see your friends making money on it, but just know that with highly risky investments like ARK Innovation, a major downturn is often lurking around the corner and it tends to pop out when you least expect it. So while I'm sure ARK is gonna have its day in the sun again at some point, predicting when that will be and getting the short-term timing right on an investment like that is just really hard to do consistently. And I think the worst may be yet to come. So finally, for our verdict, it comes down to this. Between the reality that Kathy Wood actually doesn't have a very good long-term track record, my opinion is that the near-term environment appears to favor Berkshire Hathaway. And the simple fact that it's hard to get the timing right on highly volatile investments like ARK Innovation consistently, I'm going to declare Berkshire Hathaway the winner of today's showdown. However, given the risk we discussed about succession planning at both firms, I would actually prefer a diversified mutual fund or ETF that doesn't have so much key person risk over both of these options. A couple investment managers with good processes to help alleviate that include Capital Group, which is also called American Funds, and Prime Cap, which manages some Vanguard funds. In both cases, funds are managed by multiple highly experienced portfolio managers that are responsible for individual portions of each fund. So when someone retires, it's only a change in management for maybe 10 or 20% of the portfolio instead of all 100% of it. Both companies manage lots of funds with strong long-term track records. And while they can't match the amazing 50-year track record of Warren Buffett and don't offer the same one-year upside potential that ARK Innovation had in 2020, neither of those is likely to be repeatable. You can't bypass results. You can only buy the process that was used to create them, assuming that remains in place. Kathy Wood's process has shown not to lead to consistent long-term success, and the people behind her are even less inspiring. And Warren Buffett is probably not going to be managing Berkshire Hathaway for another 50 years. So even though both have had some impressive moments that we'd all love to go back in time and be a part of, looking forward, those moments may not be repeatable. So I actually prefer some of the mutual funds from American Funds and Prime Cap. And if you want to learn the nine habits that will make you a successful investor, check out the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.